In a time when so much change is happening here in Washington, there was a return to tradition today at the White House. President-elect Donald Trump made a cord to his longtime political foe, President Joe Biden. We'll get more now from CBS's Ed O'Keefe at the White House. Given their bitter right could never happen. But today, in front of a roaring fire, the current and future president exhibited warmth. Looking forward to having a, like we said, smooth transition. Do everything we can to make sure you're accommodated, what you need. Some out today. So Good. Welcome. welcome. Thank you very much. And, uh, thank you very much. And uh, politics is tough. It's not a very nice world, but it is a nice world today, and I appreciate it very much. And a transition that's so smooth, it'll be as I very much appreciate that, Jim. You're welcome. They conferred in the Oval Office for nearly two hours, discussing domestic issues, plus the wars in the middle. Biden reinforced his view that the United States standing with Ukraine on an ongoing basis is in our national security interest. The media transition Trump didn't give Biden in 2020 as he challenged the election results. January 6 would then set off a firestorm, with Trump skipped the turmoil setting the tone for this year's bitter election. Now, traditionally, the First Lady also hosts a tea for her income today. Dr. Jill Biden gave Trump a handwritten letter of congratulations for Mrs. Trump and said she's ready to assist with her transition. Nor and did not attend Biden's inauguration. The president-elect arrived in Washington earlier this morning to meet with House Republicans. Chambers will pick their leadership today. Today's White House meeting comes as Trump quickly announced a number of cabinet appointments to be the CIA director. Ratcliffe was the director of national intelligence in the last Trump administration. Trump has also picked an Army veteran to serve as defense secretary. These are positions that have to be confirmed by the Senate. The 78-year-old incoming president also announced the calling it the De Department of Government Efficiency, led by Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy. Elon Musk is in Washington, traveled with Trump aboard his plane. He poured more than $100 million into helping President-elect Trump win. Mr. Trump said the goal of this mantle, government bureaucracy, and to slash excess regulations. We know that Elon Musk was on Capitol Hill earlier today, whether he's also at the White House at this hour, but he has been with the president, advising him and being with him as they put together the White House. Now, Trump will retake the presidency with a much broader support among the American people than when he first took the oath of office in 2017. Oval Office of the two presidents shaking hands. And, uh, looking forward to having a, like we said, smooth transition. Do everything we can. And we're going to get a chance to talk about some of that today. So, Good. Welcome. welcome. Thank you very much. And, uh, thank you very much. And, uh, and it's, uh, in many cases, not a very nice world, but it is a nice world today, and I appreciate it very much. And, a transit as smooth as it can get, and uh, I very much appreciate that, Jim. You're welcome. Thank you all. give you a sense of what happens in the Oval Office there. That is the whitegraphers, uh, print reporters, radio, television reporters as part of a small pool that gets invited into the Oval Office to not only there, but sometimes to shout questions because sometimes the president or president-elect will respond. In this case, they've decided not to respond and the press pool is being of the Oval Office. Want to go to Chief White House Correspondent uh, Nancy Cordes for more on this meeting at this hour. Nancy, but we have heard from right. members of President Biden Biden's team about what President Biden would like to talk with the president-elect about, right? Right. Making this a smooth transition. President Biden himself remembers all too well four years ago when then-President Donald Trump to to him because Donald Trump was insisting that he had actually won the election and was going to stay in the Oval Office. And so all of the with a transition, it takes months. It's extremely complicated. It's supposed to be very sophisticated to pave the way for the next administration. A lot of that today, President Biden making it clear in that meeting that he intends to do everything 
everything that he can to help the incoming president. It's going to be a smooth transition. They really didn't have much in the way of, uh, of, of compliments to pay to each other. Normally, when you see leaders sitting with uh, the president, they at least exchange some niceties about what a great job the other has done. Uh, we didn't hear a lot of that today, but uh, there is going to be more of a transition this time around than there was four years ago. Nancy Cordes, uh, thank you. And as you can see, that's something the President Biden likes to have a fire in the Oval Office. It's cool in Washington, but it's 50 degrees at this hour. But you can see that roaring fire. Campaign correspondent and campaign correspondent Robert Costa. And, and Robert, we've heard from the President's National Security Advisor here on Sunday saying that he's going to bring up not only domestic issue, but foreign policy issues, including the war in Ukraine. What do you expect could be an extended meeting? Nora, I've been talking to people close to President Biden and close to President-elect Trump. And if you look at the video, we just actively good spirits. Uh, the president smiling, President-elect Trump shaking the hand of President Biden. Here's what I, I know. Talk to gentlemen. President Biden is sitting across from someone who did not defeat him. He beat Trump in 2020 and he uh, 24. And behind the scenes, many Biden allies are still believe that President Biden would have beaten President-elect Trump, if Bonnie Four, and they say that behind the scenes, yes, President Biden dislikes President-elect Trump and how he's a danger to democracy. At the same time, they don't have this personal animus right now against each other. And it's interesting, President Trump-elect Trump has been telling people behind the scenes he believed him that at the end of the day, he thinks President Biden, this is Trump's characterization, President Biden is angrier at Democrats for, than he is at President-elect Trump. So for history, quite a intriguing dynamic between these two presidents sitting there in the Trump is telling people he wants to move quickly to cut a peace deal with Vladimir Putin, Volodymyr Zelensky and have the United States through Trump be a broker of that through Biden today to have President Biden give his two cents. But at the end of the day, President-elect Trump saying it's he and he alone who will be the one to cut that deal. It's an important point to make. Jake Sullivan saying that President Biden is going to make the very case in this meeting that Congress and the incoming walk away from Ukraine in his words, that that would create more instability in Europe. But as you point out, President-elect Trump, to an end, will be covering that very closely. Robert Costa, thank you for your excellent reporting. I want to bring in Congressional Correspondent Nicole Killing is on Capitol Hill because there, of course, the President-elect has already been visiting with lawmakers. And then this big decision today, who the Senate Republican majority leader, that new leader, critically important because the Senate is tasked with confirming many of these names that we mentioned earlier, his cabinet, part of his administration. What have we learned thus far about that leadership contest? Yeah, that's right. Well, there are leadership and in the Senate and worth noting that President-elect Trump did meet with House Republicans ahead of that meeting with President Biden, where he thanked them for and he also appeared to joke that he intent or does not intend uh, to run again unless they, quote, do something. But clear uh, to me just yesterday that this meeting was really an opportunity to congratulate the president-elect and really celebrate his victory and this man to have as a result of the outcome of the election. So in addition to those House uh, elections. There are also, as you mentioned, uh, the race underway for some the first time in some 18 years that Senate Republicans will be electing a new leader. As you well know, Mitch McConnell has held on to that podium leader in the Senate uh, for that period of time. He stepped down from leadership earlier this year, and so that race now underway to replace him, John Cornyn and Florida Senator Rick Scott. So uh, that election now underway by secret ballot, and the outcome of that will as they take the majority next Next year, Nora. Nicole Killian on the Hill. Nicole pointing out that some viewed that as a respect I won't be running again unless you do something else. Of course, Democrats are people that oppose President uh, elect Trump, will, and that the president elect has also promised to be a dictator from day one. That would be an extraordinarily difficult thing to do to try and extend and be able to like an FDR. But he was joking about that, as some believe, up on Capitol Hill today. Our coverage will continue on CBS News 24 7, your local news. This has been a CBS News special report. I'm Nora O'Donnell in Washington. And you just were watching a CBS News special report with President Joe Biden at the White House this morning. This is all signals a uh, it's a historical tradition for presidential candidates to meet with a peaceful transfer of power between the two administrations. It's worth noting that President-elect Trump said to Joe Biden, politics a nice 
world today. And this all comes after the president-elect Trump met with GOP lawmakers ahead of they make a historic vote, GOP majority Senate. And it's also worth noting that Trump did not come by himself. He was accompanied by billionaire Elon Musk. And I want to bring in Tom LaBianco again with more on that. He is a national politics reporter for 24 Site News. Tom, you just handshake. What did you make of it? <laughs> I, I could not avoid watching that roaring. <laughs> it was roaring. <laughs> you know, as, as Robert, I mean, the history of these two is is intertwined and historic. Yeah. In a, it's just fraught. You know, I've written about this at 24 site news a number of times back when Biden was still in the race. And I think we just what we at the White House, I mean, go back to the first impeachment of Trump. It was over him trying to strong arm Vladimir Zelensky, Biden's son, Hunter Biden, uh, carry it all the way through now. The last, January 6th, not a transfer or not a peaceful trip. Uh, just astounding. And and also the the very different readouts from the Biden and Trump people on, on how this just very two different worlds. Yeah, no, no question. I, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, the next Trump administration. We heard a lot this morning about what 100 days in office. How much of that do you expect to see done? And do Democrats even have an answer to that? Well, you know, we know from uh, appointments and what they've talked about so far, you've got to look at executive action here. And I've, I'm actually writing about this immigration and possible deportations uh, from the folks I've talked with. A lot of this is going to be uh, executive actionisms that are already in place so that you don't have to go through the legislative process. You don't have to go through a showdown in the Senate over a fill. Uh, so, and, the, and again, very tight margins in the House, too. You know, we saw that they picked um, Michael Waltz and Elise Stefanik for the, that Republican majority in the House. So a lot of focus on executive action. And that, and that comports with what Trump and his team campaigned for undocumented immigrants potential revocation, um, protected status, taxes on imports, tariffs. Uh, that's going, again, this, uh, this executive order he signed when he left office in 2020 and is going to re-up again this time around service protections. I'm curious, Tom, you know, because we saw with the first Trump administration eight years ago that there were some Republicans agree with Donald Trump. Fast forward to now. Are there any GOP lawmakers that aren't part of the There are absolutely not many and certainly not as many as last time. Um, and especially, too, for people who are in the Capitol, they live through January 6th. And the the dare many Republicans publicly support Trump is because of what we witnessed on last Tuesday, which is this massive swell in their ranks and the working class in particular across ethnic lines for Trump. And that only reinforces the fraught dynamic. But also, too, last time around, eight years ago, you had a lot of old establishment folks. They're not there anymore. New Republican Party establishment. All right, Tom Lombianco, thank you so much for sticking around for us and for that great insight as always. All right, we are continuing to cover this historic meeting between President-elect Donald Trump and President Joe Biden. They shook hands at the White House just moments. Former President, thank you. Donald, congratulations. Thank you. And uh, looking forward to having a likely session. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Looking forward to having a likely set. Do everything we can to make sure you're accommodated, what you need. And we're going to get a chance to talk about some of that today. So Good. Welcome. Welcome thank you. Back. Uh, politics is tough, and it's, uh, in many cases, not a very nice world, but it is a nice world today. A transition that's so smooth, it'll be as smooth as it can get, and uh, I very much appreciate that, Jim. You're welcome. <laughs> And this was just Donald Trump meeting with President Joe Biden in this signal that they will begin their smooth and peaceful transition of power. This is not a nice world, but it is a nice world today. Meanwhile, Donald Trump sent shockwaves to Washington ahead of today's trip for a number of reasons. President-elect and Trump intends to nominate Fox News host and veteran Pete Hegseth for the role of defense secretary for his administration. National security correspondent Charlie Daggett. He has more on all things Pentagon. 
But before we get to that, Charlie, I want to switch gears. I want to ask government employee accused of leaking records related to Israel's retaliatory strike. Well, Mr. President, elect and the former president, thank you, very Donald. Much. Congratulations. Thank you. Very much. And uh, looking forward to a smooth transition. Do everything we can to make sure you're accommodated, what you need. And we're going to get a chance to talk about some of that today. So. Good. And, uh, thank you very much. And uh, politics is tough, and it's. Uh, in many cases, not a very nice world. I appreciate it very much. And a transition that's so smooth, it'll be as smooth as it can get. And uh, I very much appreciate that, Jim. Thank you all. Just even looking at the body language, well, right? Sure, more President mm -hmm. Biden there by not answering questions. And that other took some things. restraint, you know uh, it for did. For sure, because he's been in that position. We've all been in the Oval with him. And he mm -hmm. I'm sorry, just the imagery the fire burning, mm -hmm. the bust of MLK on one side, JFK on the other. I mean, wow, that is a moment. And these two men have not seen each other, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think, since our debate. 9-11, that's, right. that's right, briefly. that's right, that's right. But certainly not have had, had a moment to speak yeah. uh, since the debate yeah. uh, that you moderated, And they didn't really speak course. to right. each other. Again, I just want to say what Donald Trump just said. Politics is tough. Transition, we want the transmission to get. And he said, I very much appreciate it to Joe. So these yeah. are, uh, you know, um, in their quiet moments, exactly sort of what uh, mm -hmm. is going on here, but also Thank President Biden much. saying, welcome back. Um, you know, and committing to uh, smooth trans up the understatement, but a perfect way to describe it. Oh, so we cannot underscore enough the transition is smooth and him for that. And what a difference in this moment versus how Donald Trump in Joe Biden's win. It's not to this moment ever admitting or conceding to Joe Biden for the Biden to the White House, which also had an effect on, on President Biden's approval rating, and it got his presidency off to an entirely different start. There's no Collins, who is there at the White House, and Caitlin, it is a, really a remarkable moment to see them sitting there together at the White House. Um, very nice, very cordial. But Trump himself talking about the smooth transition and the fact that you know they're meeting in a place just feet away from where on that TV, the January 6th insurrection take place. Um, it, it is just a remarkable moment. Yeah, and Trump was, had held a dagger to the throat of democracy on that day in that historic speech that Biden gave on the anniversary of January. That moment there where the two of them sh are shaking hands, it's important to keep in mind that in 68 days from now, that will be Trump's Oval Office. He will the Capitol, and then at noon that day is when the power will be turned over, and Joe Biden will leave the White House, and Donald Trump will enter the White House. MJ and Kristen looking at this and this moment, you know, the pleasantries are being exchanged there. Certainly, it is a relationship that is, you know, Trump obviously has said horrible things about Biden on the campaign trail, calling him diminished and talking about him at nicer things lately. But really, you know, to think about what this transition is going to look like, they're committing to a smooth one that was not obviously in place four years to make the White House look a lot different when Trump takes office. Yeah, I mean, this is really the pinnacle moment of the transition. I mean, obviously, we're going to continue to see, see this rollout of what the staff is going to look like. But this is, marks the beginning of that peaceful transfer of power and how Donald Trump handles this and how Joe Biden it's going to look like. And I heard Jeff saying, and I thought it was interesting, the fact that Donald Trump was deferring to President Joe Biden when it came to answering questions. He was looking. Mm -hmm. uh, clearly, he is trying to set this tone. And by saying it's going to be a smooth transition of power, kind of ignoring what happened last night. They're starting fresh here. But he is trying to set a tone clearly with what he is saying. Obviously, we'll see if he ends up contradicting that. We know that that's all. Right now, it is clear what he's doing. Well, yes, that scene was cordial. The brief pleasantries were 
pleasant, I guess, polite, boring. You know, the reason that this scene and this image is so striking is because these two men have no relationship. President George W. Bush welcoming the Obamas to the White House. This is not Bill Clinton uh, welcoming W. Bush to the White House. You uh, look back on the real warmth there. Uh, there is no actual warmth, despite the fire, uh, between mm -hmm. those two men. Uh, we've talked about the many ways Trump has uh, talked in denigrating ways about President Biden. Biden, too, throughout the course of this campaign, uh, referring to as a total threat uh, to the country. And now, on top of that, he is having to say the words, welcome back, to Lee actually could completely alter and probably already has uh, altered his uh, political legacy. The fact that he seek a second term uh, and then was forced out of the race and then the vice president that he endorsed didn't end up winning. I mean, that is going to be sort of anything that is ever written uh, about President Biden. And here they are now just sitting a couple of feet away from each other and he is having to say you know those relationships were not always warm between you know the Clintons and the Bushes or the Bushes and the Obamas when that was happening in the moment certainly their political views uh, this moment says and you know talking about how cordial it is and how you know uh, strange that is given what we know they really think about each other it's because it's a moment that people learned it did not happen Biden said I'm going to make sure you have everything you need I'm going to be very accommodating and then Trump of course did say thank is not a gesture that was extended to Biden. Yes, and uh, Biden uh, looks like uh, what he is uh, because he didn't bring up the legitimate grievances that he has left over from 2020. He just accepts it and he moved on. He says something nice in a situation like this when he is treated very well and praised. Um, but that does turn even medium term and maybe not even short term effect on him. We all know him. He's been out there since role as a candidate for president and then through his term, and then he's been running ever since uh, he left uh, the first term. So I think the symbolism is important, and Joe Biden is doing everything he can uh, to make that a smooth transition. But it takes two to be tangoing for very long. Hmm. Molly, to that point, I mean, there are questions about whether this second term will be uh, a bit more firm or whether it will be... Um, turbulent. And I'm, I'm curious sort of what your sense is. I mean, we heard Trump there say um, it's going to be said it's going to be the smoothest transition there's ever been. Uh, that's me paraphrasing. Um, but but your thoughts about what we know so far and whether that disciplined administration or if we can expect the same as uh, four years ago. Discipline than eight years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think Larry's right. You know, right now uh, it's easy for Trump to be because he is surrounded by people who are placating him and telling him he's great. Uh, and the, and the, the, you know, where the rubber hits the road is going to be, does he react? And we do have a lot of experience uh, with how he tends to behave in that situation. That being said, you know, when he won in 2016 and the people around him had, did not have much of an organization, we're clearly seeing you know, the way he's assembling his cabinet elections that are happening right now on Capitol Hill uh, is, is much more organized, much more uh, done with an understanding works. Uh, some of his picks for the cabinet have been somewhat disruptive. Others have been uh, much more normal. There's still a lot uh, that are going to be in uh, in his administration. So I think we're all going to be looking at those signs to see what they portend. Uh, but at least for now, at a situation that is far less turbulent than after the 2016 election, but that is a pretty 